Hey, I'm Jake from the Tattoo Improvement Network, and welcome to another episode of Fireside. Damn. Hey, I'm Jake from the Tattoo Improvement Network, and welcome to another episode. Of... <laughs> it's getting worse. Pretty soon, you're gonna fuck your name up. Hey, I'm Jake from the Tattoo Improvement Network, and welcome to another episode of the Fireside Tattoo Podcast. This is part two of our interview with Guy Aitchison. Uh, if you've not yet seen part one, which is episode 122, then go on and hit pause on this, go back and watch part one, and then come back to this. I hope you enjoy it. Be sure to click the thumb up and uh, leave a comment. Thank you, guys. You've, you've basically answered what my next question was going to be, but I'll, I'll throw it out there anyways. Is it, you've... You've worked with the same kind of subject matter imagery for, for a long time now, and I was going to ask what has kept you uh, entertained with, with bio-organic type uh, subject matter f for so long. And But you've basically said it. It's it's just trying to make it what it is in your head and always trying to, to improve it. What, but what about it about abstract uh, shapes, textures, or organic image? What, what do you, can you put into words what draws you to that and keeps you from exploring in other directions? Well, partly it's my clients that keep me from exploring in other directions. <laughs> I mean, and we all have that experience. Yeah. I used to do all kinds of subjects, and I still could. But, I mean, I've been asking for, like, two years. I'll ask again. Somebody, I want to do a horse. Knee <laughs> to armpit. Like, ah, gnarly, muscular, lit, you know, 3D, dimensional, all the effects. Yeah. Somebody. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, I think that any, any artist who specializes, let's say you do Japanese or let's say you do tribal, uh, unless you just let it become your job. Oh, I'm going to go do another Hanya mask, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to ask yourself, okay, I've done five Hanya masks this year. What could I do differently? Mm -hmm. Or the things that I like the most about the ones I've done recently, how could I, like, apply those together but in a different way? Uh, you're going to ask yourself, what's the next step, you know? Yeah. By, by repeating subject matter, you can take these forward steps with your technique or with your overall vision or with your clientele letting you go larger and more experimental with it, you know. Yeah. You start out doing Hanya masks and then you've got a Hanya mask sleeve and then you've done a Hanya mask back piece and you're able to keep building it that way and when you get larger, more ambitious and more imaginative with the same subject matter, you can. it doesn't matter what the subject matter is right. after a while. Uh, I, f I feel like every tattoo ultimately is, at least in part, an abstract composition on the body. You know, from a distance, blur your eyes at the way that it sits, the way that it flows, the use of dark and light. Those things are equally important with uh, any style, mm -hmm. whether it be representational or not. And so I'm just, I'm in, in this place where I'm not messing around with subject matter very much but i'm really working hard on everything else yeah and it, you know it's it's multi-dimensional tribal or whatever it's it's about flow on the body it's about making the musculature look more yeah. buff or whatever you know it's it's yeah. about trying to make the person look good and yeah. um I, I think all tattoos to a certain extent are about that or should be about that and sure. So I don't feel like I'm missing anything. It's just the the lack of subject matter has allowed me to focus on these other things, which I find very interesting. Mm -hmm. I find things like lighting and focus and contrast and texture and all that to be very interesting. So mm -hmm. if I were to do other styles of, of tattooing, I would want to incorporate all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I would be equally happy. Yeah. But uh, I, this just happens to be the place where I'm at right now. And... Uh, there's so much territory that's unexplored. I mean, uh, working on the Biomech Encyclopedia, it's a project that's been going on for over five years, uh, you know, collaborating with these other artists. Uh, man, you know, every every time I even dip my toes in it, I come back out thinking, man, we'll, we'll never even touch and uh, close right. to a small percentage of, of everything that could be done with it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's limitless. And so uh, there definitely is that sense of... Uh, just scratching the surface. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, let's let's transition uh, along those lines. Let's transition over to um, the the digital reinventing the okay. the tattoo. And we may actually clip this into a couple of episodes because I know it's gone a little bit long. Maybe this is part two. But we can edit quite a bit out too. Can, you know. Yeah, I like to. We'll, yeah, we'll we'll keep it. We'll just maybe make it two. Uh, let's um, let, let's talk about that a little bit because obviously that most people know that 
the original book, and it was a uh, it was a groundbreaking book. When I first read it, it was the first time that I really, of course, I was very young and tattooing whenever I first saw the book, and and a lot of the bo- lines of the body mapping to the body were ideas that I wasn't thinking of at that time. And so, it would, uh, for a lot of young tattooers and young artists, it was uh, it was kind of a, a, a it, o- it was an eye opener for them. What made you decide to expand on it and and I just and I appreciate you um, giving me the opportunity to to go through it. It's just a ton of information, and, it's, and it seems like it's constantly growing. What I'll just let you go on it. What kind of what kind of time commitment is it taking? What made you decide to do it in the first place? Why all those things? It's been such an organic process. It started out with uh, I was invited to do a seminar at one of the tattoo tour conventions. So this would have been twenty four-ish years ago, Mm -hmm. Uh, Dennis Dwyer and J.D. Crow put these conventions on, and they were among the first to invite artists to put seminars on. And I felt like, man, I feel strange charging people to sit there and watch me talk. (laughs) Um, How could my words possibly be worth 150 bucks, you know? Uh, And so I felt like I needed to give them something to take home, so I made these little booklets right mm-hmm. where the basic points that i was going over are kind of explained and i figured yeah, if it's in print maybe they'll retain a little bit more of it mm-hmm. uh, with some pictures you know there would always be like let's say 20 pages of you know type with referring to the color pages in the back because this is this is all old school desktop publishing uh, but people got a lot out of those little books and i started getting requests for hey could i just get the book uh since you're not giving that seminar anymore yeah so one thing led to another, and that's how the first reinventing was was made, and that was you know a loose leaf binder kind of affair. And I did as much with it as I could in that format, and reached a point where I just felt like it had to become a real book. And so then the real book happened, and you know that's about two thousand hours of sitting at the computer. Wow! <laughs> if you're curious about the time, wow! A couple of years of of refining and refining and refining and proofing and proofing and proofing. Mm. Um, I'm extremely retentive about this stuff. I do all the stuff myself, every bit of video editing, every bit of layout. I am a control freak. So uh, the only things that I outsourced at all were, well, I had a proofer, a PhD guy go through the text and say, there's another dangling participle there. Uh, But, you know, uh, yes, lots lots of uh, work went into that. So I think 3,000 of those moved through the years and... By the time the last one sold, I felt that there was a lot of it that was, I don't want to say obsolete, but the industry started changing so fast, you know, started yeah. evolving so fast. Like, I mean, in my most recent print edition of Reinventing, I was like, rotaries, <laughs> don't waste your time, <laughs> right. you know? Yeah. <laughs> and here I am, <laughs> yes. injected dude, right? <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So th- there were some things that I, you know, felt I had to change immediately, so... So when when it was time to go electronic with it, which was actually Michelle's idea, mm-hmm. um, and I'm doing it working with uh, Gabe Ripley from uh, Tattoo Now and his crew, yeah. uh, we uh, changed some things right off the bat, like the the most glaring errors, like you know, for instance, the rotary machine oh, thing. Right. So from there, I kind of was w- then it was a chance to back off and say, okay, what next? If if you can just add into this anytime you want, mm-hmm. um, what else? And, and I like the idea of bringing some guest artists in because when I first started doing educational stuff, I was a jack of all trades tattooer, and now I'm a specialist. And I don't want people to think, well, I don't do bio, so that book won't help me. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though the things that I cover in the book are applicable to any style, it would be easy for people to draw that conclusion incorrectly. So I've started bringing in other artists, mm-hmm. and uh, so let's so far so far we've got uh, Nick uh, Baxter, we've got Russ Abbott, Mega Gene Morris, um, Phil Garcia recently yeah. put a chapter in. Yeah, I read uh, that. My friend Don McDonald, who uh, just healed this pass that he did on oh. me recently, nice. uh, he does yeah. lots of big stencil stuff. Uh, Halo uh, yeah. Jankowski, he's uh, um, really great with Photoshop and did a, did a great Photoshop chapter. Yeah. I'm working with Dino Cook right now and Nate Beavers oh, wow. on, uh, on some chapters. And there's other people I'm, I'm talking with, Killian Moon. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to keep it broad that way. To yeah. And a lot of these are artists who read Reinventing when they were first coming up. Mm-hmm. And 
So uh, I, I was happy to be able to ask them to to do something. Yeah. And beyond that, I've I've been adding seminars. You know, if I do a seminar and record it, I'll edit it and make a really nice, clean version of it and plunk it in there. It's free if you're a subscriber. If mm -hmm. you're not a subscriber, you can buy the DVD. But, the, you know, yeah. for the price of the DVD, you might as well just get the... Subscribe, yeah. Right. Yeah. And then you can look at it on your computer or your phone or your tablet. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You know, you'll get notifications whenever there's things added and, and that kind of thing. And uh, I just feel like it's a... For the modern day, that's the right way to do things mm -hmm. a lot of people don't get around to looking at something if they can't look it on their phone because they're busy people are freaking busy you know mm -hmm. uh and they want to look something up and you know the book is up on the shelf in the other room and they're out uh having their mm -hmm. coffee and cigarette break and like oh just oh yeah, yeah. there uh, yeah. I, I think it's more helpful that way more useful in general and uh i'm excited about the possibilities yeah, yeah. Do you see, as far as being a pioneer in kind of in tattoo education, and um, and I know you read the the post that that uh, that I did on mm -hmm. the um, on the reinventing uh, digital book. As far as some of the shortcomings of of traditional the traditional ways that we've trained artists, um, just well, I shouldn't say shortcomings. The best thing that we have, as far as training artists, transitioning into the digital world where everyone learns to a certain extent on these things in our pockets. How, how do you see reinventing or tattoo education be, being part of that? Um, is it only, is it something that you always see being available to um, licensed tattooers? Is it something you would like to yes. draw people yes. in? I think, I think that that's an important uh, barrier to put up. Uh, and, you know, people are going to sneak around it and the people who are really going to work hard at, like, getting the best education they can, regardless of their situation, are, they, they get my support, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes there's just not a good shop to apprentice in and, you know, you're divorced and your kid lives in the next town and you can't move right. uh, for that reason. And if you're still going to go out of your way to do everything right um, and, and learn properly you shouldn't be held back but at the same time as much as possible uh i really try to encourage people to find a studio mm -hmm. um to that effect we're actually working on an apprentice program that will go uh into reinventing and this will be something that both your teacher and you would have in your Thank subscription and that you know there idea. would be things the teacher would see that you wouldn't see mm -hmm. uh there would be daily exercises and things like that uh based uh, at least in part on the experience I had in as an apprentice, which I thought was a really good, quick, you know, from ground level to functional in six months kind of mm. experience. The guy yeah. that was teaching me really wanted me functional. Mm. So, I, I think that is probably the the marriage that that makes the most sense. There's just literally no way. We we try to teach a lot of. We try to encourage um, tattooers to explore other mediums, and we we try to be more art focused than technique focused for that reason. Um, and, but we still get a nonstop kind of, uh, uh, you know, bl email blasts and comments on YouTube that are that exact problem that you described. Small town, can't leave for whatever reason. Two shops in town, no one can draw at either shop. Uh, it's one guy that's a two year veteran artist and he has three apprentices just to fill chairs. Yeah. And, you know, and, and it's, it's sad to see people stuck in, in, in that situation. And I've often thought that the, that the hap that the marriage there is that obviously you need a mentor. Someone has to be there to watch the marks that you're making uh, because you can't do that from, you can't do that from here and you can't do it from my right. studio. Uh, but often those mentors just don't have the tools to teach. And yep. why would they not want to invest in the tools to teach to to help their young artists get better and to help their shop get better? I think that's probably the the direction that it goes. That that is the plan, uh, and part of it is like we we're talking about before. It's it's if nothing else, harm reduction. Yeah. At the very ground level, you've you've got people who are gonna they're gonna do, be doing their apprentice tattoos regardless, mm -hmm. and maybe you can guide them past doing the worst possible apprentice tattoos. <laughs> right. And yeah. people who take on their first apprentice uh, with only three years of tattooing under their belt, well, okay, maybe they really do need to fill that chair. Maybe they really do believe in this person. Maybe this person they're bringing in really does have some drawing skills. Well, let's try to make this go smoothly then. Mm -hmm. Let's give them the tools that they need to, and probably that person with the three years experience could use a little learning themselves, sure. you know, and in the course of, of teaching, they will learn. And, you know, honestly, in my own experience, the best learning experience I've had has been being a teacher. 
I have to think about everything that I present. I find the holes. Uh-huh. You know, sometimes I'll find the holes in the middle of a lecture. Like, da, da, you know, <laughs> right. Uh, but it's it's healthy because then you, you, you have to ask yourself, okay, so why is it that I do it this way? Mm-hmm. I've always thought it was because of this. But now that I've really started thinking about it and trying to explain it, uh, maybe not. Maybe, yeah. maybe maybe there could be other ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think that if you're not questioning your own motives or the reasons that you're that you're making certain decisions, then uh, then you'll just do things out of habit and you'll get stuck in that rut you were talking about earlier. Uh, man, that's great. Oh, uh, as far as um, subscribing, uh, getting to reinventing, I know most people know how how to get to you. Explain a little bit how the subscription works, what's involved in it, all that kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. simple. You go to reinventingthetattoo.com and you can subscribe there. Uh, it's 200 for the year. If you're already a subscriber and you're wanting to renew, it's 150 okay. per year. And people ask, well, do I have to keep paying? Well, I keep adding to it. Mm-hmm. It's a ton of work. I dedicate a lot of my time to yeah. creating this new material. So every time you renew, I promise you, you will get your money's worth. There's uh, something new there. You know, there's going to be several new seminars added, uh, you know, just in this uh, coming few months. Uh, each one by itself would be like a $100 DVD. So, mm-hmm. uh yeah, you do have to keep paying, but that allows me to keep developing the material. It's not just a book. Right. So once you have your subscription, you just log on from your phone or your tablet or your computer, and uh, there it is. You'll start out with a, an announcement page, and then from there you can go to the table of contents and uh, go to the various different uh, chapters and videos that we have there. Mm-hmm. Whenever something new is added, you'll get a notification, um, which happens pretty regularly. Uh, we yeah. get a, a newsletter every two weeks, uh, just a brief, hey, how's it going? Here's a tattoo I did last week. This is some of the challenges I ran into. Here's a new thing we're adding next week. See yeah. you guys later. Uh, so the the subscription is um, it's an ever-growing thing. Uh, once you have it, um, you, you could take your time reading it. You, know, you could take your time watching the videos. You can watch them as many times as you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's dozens of hours of video on there already. Yeah. You know, that there will be more. So, uh, yeah, that's that's what's involved right now. Yeah. I think that just the the process kind of video, like you're working on the the, the last thing that I saw on it was the big kind of back cover up where there was a lot mm-hmm. of lettering at the top that you're dealing with and then other kind of random tattoos throughout. And, and I think there's nothing quite like uh, seeing progress photos or videos and 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 uh, or blogging or whatever it is and kind of getting in the mindset or, or, or being able to kind of look over the shoulder of someone that really um is 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 being faced with challenges making decisions right there on the spot seeing how they're dealing with those challenges and uh and, and of course you'll and you they're not going to steal exactly what you're doing but you'll find a way to interpret the the problem solving skills and and then uh kind of and then reproduce them in your own way. I think that's invaluable. I found that unless you're tracing somebody else's drawings and copying them directly, it's it's hard to steal exactly what somebody <laughs> it's, else it's does. It's tough. Huh? Yeah. You know, you can take a couple good tricks from them, but it's always going to end up going back through the U filter. Right. Um, and will improve what you're doing just a little bit. Now, that piece you're talking about, that's that's a seminar that I'm in the middle of editing now. Mm. So this is what you get. You see the before picture. Mm-hmm. Then there's a video of me drawing with marker, and you see like several stages of, of the drawing, you know, light, medium, dark, um, and then some video of, of me working a small area of it for a few minutes, and it skips forward in time, skips forward in time, mm-hmm. then a photo, then you see, you know, here, here it is, end of the session, here it is healed, yeah. then the next session, same process, and then at the very end, you see before, fresh, healed, fresh, healed, fresh, healed for the different passes. Yeah. Uh, I try to be extremely thorough with this stuff. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm a, a kind of a madcap documenter. I take a lot of photos and videos as I'm going. Yeah. That's so nice that, you, uh, that you're that you honest enough with your fan base and with viewers to, to show. Uh, I, I remember I was at the Portland uh, Worldwide Tattoo Conference last year. I guess it was a year ago, a little more than a year ago. And you showed um, oh, a big kind of golden skull that was a cover-up that you'd done many years ago. And a lot of the old tattoo had had made its way back through it. Do you know the piece I'm talking yeah. about? And you went through it again. And I thought, man, what a, what an an honest and like gutsy thing to do to say like, man, I, I did this huge cover up and, you know, all these years later, look, there's that old tattoo. And it just, I think it, it sets a lot of people's minds at ease to know that you struggle with a lot of the same things that the rest of us struggle well, with. And I, don't, I don't have any magic. Yeah. You know, yeah. none of us do. We have to work with the reality of skin. And, uh, I think having a, having some humility is important. I'm not trying to impress people. I'm not up there to say, look how amazing I am. Yeah. You know, 
And, you know, honestly, there was a certain amount of that when I first started this educational thing. I used a lot more big words and, you know, I was trying harder to be impressive. The most important to, thing to me right now is that people can take home something from it, that they can learn something concrete from it. Uh, you know, I think that that's more impressive than me, you know, showing them something heavily Photoshopped that makes me look like some kind of a tattoo god because I'm not. Right. I'm struggling as much as everybody else. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sharing what I've learned along the way. I've been at the game 28 years. I believe I have a lot to share. And a lot of people have told me that they've gotten a lot out of my classes. Mm -hmm. So I continue giving them because I get a lot of satisfaction out of that feedback. Yeah, man, we're really happy that you do. And I appreciate you taking the time to do this with us. Go to reinventing the tattoo. Uh, dot com uh, yep. or tattooeducation.com. I'm sure there are links from that. Oh, yeah. That stuff should all kind of tie together, I would imagine. And um, I think we're going to try to get in an episode with Michelle as well. Yep. And, uh, man, it's an honor. Yeah, Thank you right so on, much. Jake. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys, as always, for supporting what we do, tattooimprovement.com, and sign up. You'll find out where we're going. I don't know where we're going. We may find our way back home from here. We might not. Hard to know. <laughs>